Ever wonder why you should be spending extra money to get image stabilization in a lens or a camera body? Uh, wonder what it'll do for you, whether it's worth it, what it's all about? Well, if you've ever gone through that thought process, stay tuned to this video because we'll answer one of those questions. Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked for Life Photography. And today we're going to look at image stabilization. And if you've ever looked into it or tried to figure out what it is, uh, I know the jargon can be confusing, the terminology, IBIS, OIS, uh, three axis, five axis, who knows what half this stuff means, right? So let's get into image stabilization and more importantly, what it does for us. Now, in a previous video, I talked about camera shake. And if you have a camera like this that has no stabilization, you have to be very careful not to have your shutter speed too slow, otherwise you'll get you know, movement of the camera which shows up in the image. You end up with a blurry image because you can't keep the camera still enough. So when we are trying to shoot at slow shutter speeds, which could be because the light is very low or we need a lot of depth of field so we've got a small aperture, or we want to work with the lowest uh, number ISO, or the highest quality, let's say ISO 200 or ISO 160 like we have on this dial here, then we can have challenges with our shutter speed and our shutter speeds end up being too slow to enable us to hand hold the sh get and get the shot. Now I'm gonna post up a Christmas ornament that was shot with this lens handheld at a 15th of a second. And uh, as a consequence, I got a sharp image. It's amazing. 15th of a second, normally a lens this long, that's a 600 millimeter lens, I'd be normally shooting at a thousandth of a second. Instead, I'm shooting at 15th of a second handheld and get a sharp shot. So that's what stabilization does for us. Enables us to shoot at lower, slower shutter speeds and still get a sharp shot. Now, there are two kinds of uh, image stabilization that are actually mechanical and optical, and there is one that's digital. The digital one is simple. It takes your sensor and reserves some of it to compensate for the shake. So it means you're losing the outer edge of the sensor. You're not using it. So your images are using less pixels. And uh, this is a 23 millimeter lens. If it had digital Im image stabilization, it makes it effectively a 25. So you're losing some of your coverage. You know, you're not covering as wide an angle because you're giving away part of the sensor to handle the image stabilization. So I'm not crazy about digital Im image stabilization. I prefer the mechanical optical ones. And what they do differently, in this particular lens, this telephoto lens, this is a 70 to 300, they actually move some of the elements in the lens to create the image stabilization. And this is called optical image stabilization. Now, this camera doesn't have image stabilization, but we'll pretend it's the newer model that does. What happens in the body of the camera, where they actually physically move the sensor to get image stabilization, whereas digital, they're digitally moving it. In uh, this camera, in the newer models, they physically move the sensor in order to stabilize the camera. So as your camera is going up and down, it's moving the sensor in the opposite direction to counteract it. So you end up with stabilization in the body, which is called in-body image stabilization. Most people refer to it as IBIS. And you have optical image stabilization, which is in the lens, and it's called OIS. If, so you hear IBIS, OIS, IBIS is in the camera, OIS is in the lens. Now, as far as turning it on is concerned, you can see I've got a switch here, and you see off and on for OIS. So I'm able to turn this optical image stabilization on or off. And the reason why we want to be able to do that is when we mount it on a tripod. You don't want image stabilization to be on when you're in on a tripod because there's nothing moving and the image stabilization is expecting things to be moving. So you can actually have some 
odd movements going on from your image stabilization when you're on a tripod. Sounds funny, but that happens. So when you're on a tripod, turn it off. When you're dealing with a lens like this, it doesn't have a switch. So we'll put it here. You can see there is no OIS switch. So you have to do this. For this lens, you have to do it in the menu system. So those are the two ways you're going to be turning OIS uh, on or off. One is a switch, one is in software. If you want to turn your IBIS on or off, you have to do it in the software of the camera. You have to go into the menu system and turn it off because there's usually not switches for it. There may be cameras out there with switches, but the ones I'm familiar with, there's no switches on them. So when you're dealing with IBIS, it's in the camera, OIS, it's in the lens. What's the benefit? Why is, is one better than the other? Well, there's a general rule about image stabilization is the shorter focal length lenses do better with in-body uh, stabilization. So if I'm using, you know, uh, oh, the lens I've got on here, I'm forgetting I got it. This is a, a wide angle zoom, works great with image stabilization in the body. However, if you're working with things like this, you're better off having optical image, uh, image stabilization in the lens. Uh, and if you have the, a camera that's stabilized and a lens that's stabilized, they'll often work together to give you the best result. Now, the other thing that you're going to run across is three axis and five axis image stabilization. So what does that mean? Well, if any of you are familiar with airplanes, you'll know about pitch, yaw, and roll. That's three axis stabilization. So what that means is pitch is the camera is pitching up and down like this. So what it's doing is it's correcting that kind of motion. Yaw is side to side like this. And roll is like this. So that's what's being corrected. Pitch, yaw, roll. So you've got three axis image stabilization in the lens but you can have five axis image stabilization in the body. So what that means is your image stabilization not only corrects for pitch, roll, and yaw, but it throws in two other elements as well, which is a side to side motion and an up and down motion. And by correcting for these, you're adding some elements that are useful for video, for to, uh, video uh, work where um, you're panning and that sort of thing. And there can be panning in still photography too. Uh, you know, if I'm following a bird, for example, and taking a picture with this big lens, it's nice to have that uh, five axis uh, image stabilization, which is allowing the side to side motion, which we get with panning. So three axis is pitch, roll, and yaw. Five axis also includes pitch, roll, and yaw, plus up and down side to side. So. Those are things to keep in mind with image stabilization. You don't have to have them if it's not likely going to be of use to you. Indoor photography, as a perfect example, a lot of handheld photography with long lenses. Whatever the case may be, if you don't have the need, you don't need to pay the money for it. But if you do, remember you've got it in the lens, in the body, or both together. So keep all that in mind. Cheers.